Thank you very much. And our next speaker is Dr. Kamini Walia, Senior Scientist at Indian Council of Medical Research, which is India's premier research institute. She's currently leading the setting up of the antimicrobial surveillance network of ICMR and coordinating activities of antimicrobial stewardship program for the entire country. Welcome, Dr. Walia, and over to you now. Thank you, Shobha. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to showcase uh, what progress has been made in India uh, with regard to containment of antimicrobial uh, resistance. And uh, I'm very happy to share uh, the stage with the very eminent speakers uh, from WHO and uh, really grateful for this opportunity. I'll just take a minute to connect my slides. So are you able to uh, see my slides, please? Yes, yes, very clearly, yes. OK. So um, we have heard uh, the previous speakers refer to antimicrobial resistance and why it is so important to contain antimicrobial resistance and how we really need to uh, take the action. Uh, as of yesterday, actually, we are already uh, late in uh, uh, mounting this response to containment of AMR. Uh, so uh, why is surveillance important? Surveillance actually provides us the evidence. Uh, what is the disease burden in the country? How are the uh, antimicrobial resistance uh, patterns and trends change, are changing along uh, the time? And that information is not available to us unless we have a very strong uh, surveillance system which can detect these changes uh, uh, in a timely fashion so, so that we are able to launch an informed uh, response based on the evidence. Now, antimicrobial resistance, as the previous uh, speakers alluded to, is a foundation of modern medicine. And that is what scares us the most, that if we uh, have very high levels of antimicrobial resistance and a very thin pipeline of new antimicrobials, which is the uh, case as of today, we might be going back to the pre-antibiotic era. Uh, and as uh, mentioned previously, antimicrobial resistance is a direct consequence of excessive use of antimicrobials, uh, which is most of the time uh, done to compromise for poor infection control practices. Uh, this is uh, compromising the gains that many countries made towards control of infectious diseases. We are seeing that happening in tuberculosis. We are seeing that happening in case of malaria. And also, um, now we have a bigger burden of uh, uh, drug-resistant infections in community, as well as uh, multi-drug resistant infections, which we see in the hospitals, which are also referred to as uh, nosocomial infections, because the drug use in hospitals is very high. So the uh, bugs that uh, people acquire while they, uh, during their stay in hospital sometimes is very, very uh, drug resistant, which makes it uh, difficult to manage, which increases the treatment cost. So that's why there is all this discussion about uh, reducing antimicrobial resistance uh, uh, levels um, in the country in uh, and as well as globally. So uh, it's, it's unfortunate that we are in the times where even a simple cesarean section or um, knee replacement kind of a procedure, uh, it becomes very challenging uh, to handle because of the drug resistant infection, hospital acquired infection that the patient may get. So these drug resistant pathogens are actually invisible threats, uh, which continue to claim invisible victims in our hospitals. The reason I call them invisible is that there is no government system, uh, at least in India, which is recording the deaths due to drug resistant infection. So we continue to uh, remain oblivious of what is the actual burden of drug resistant infections in our country. And during the course of my talk, I will also talk about why it is so difficult to capture uh, the disease burden, which uh, uh, AMR thrusts upon us. Um, as uh, the previous speakers mentioned, a lot of antimicrobial uh, use happens in the livestock and agriculture. So we really need a one health kind of an approach and uh, address antimicrobial uh, use at all levels. This is the national action plan, which India launched in 2017. And as you can see that uh, knowledge and evidence, which is the second pillar of national action plan, it highlights the importance of improving surveillance because um, we can only uh, launch an informed 
prompt response if we know what is happening on the ground and that evidence comes through a good surveillance system. Now, uh, surveillance uh, data is necessary to understand trends and patterns, but then why was it such an important uh, challenge that India had to, or ICMR had to launch a special um, initiative on surveillance because all the hospitals, uh, they have a clinical microbiology lab and they routinely collect this data. But uh, the challenge is that most of these data comes from small studies or labs or medical institutes, and they don't follow a single uh, standard operating procedure. So that's why there is uh, considerably heterogeneity in the data as it is collected. And because of these methodological limitations, we can't have a nationally representative data or nationally uh, representative trends of antimicrobial resistance. There are lack of patient safety programs in our country and we need a one health approach uh, in terms of consolidating the evidence too. Uh, for the purpose of my talk, I will be restricting my uh, uh, information to the human aspects of AMR surveillance. And we have two networks in the country. Uh, that is the NCDC network, which is operational in uh, 20 hospitals. And this is the ICMR network. Uh, this is uh, functional in 30 hospitals across the country. And I will be talking, focusing on this particular network and how it is moving forward. ICMR is a, a medical research uh, organization. It's a nodal medical research organization in India. And uh, the mandate of this network is to continue to monitor the trends and the patterns of AMR in the country. And we use, uh, we focus on these six pathogenic groups, the Enterobacteriaceae, gram-negative non-fermenters, enteric fever organisms. Uh, then um, enteric fever essentially is the salmonella uh, typhoid. Then the diarrheogenic organisms, which are, uh, because of uh, which which is a um, which cause cholera and other uh, diarrheas, uh, bacterial diarrheas, then gram positive infections, including uh, methicillin resistant Staph aureus and Enterococcus and fungal pathogens. We work with the uh, 20 tertiary care hospitals across the country, and we also work with few private hospitals uh, as well as the standalone uh, laboratories. We publish this data every year. So what does the ICMR initiative look like? What uh, Once you capture, uh, this surveillance network was started in 2013 uh, with the mandate to capture the trends and the patterns, do the phenotypic and genotypic characterization, improve the quality of data uh, to uh, monitor uh, if there is any uh, outbreak or what kind of transmission dynamics are working. On this in, uh, network, we also built two more initiatives. We are also training these hospitals which participate in our surveillance programs. We are strengthening them for infection prevention and control practices. And also uh, we are helping them establish the structure and process of implementing antimicrobial stewardship. Now these two components are very important. As uh, Elizabeth mentioned in her talk, most of the time the antibiotics are prescribed to compensate for poor hygiene and sanitation practices and this happens very often in our hospitals where IPC is compromised. So unless we improve the infection prevention and control practices in a hospital, we will not be able to reduce antimicrobial prescriptions because the physicians will continue to prescribe. And the second very important aspect is to uh, rationalize and uh, train the doctors to prescribe responsibly. And that comes from the trainings on antimicrobial stewardship. So this is uh, what ICMR uh, initiative looks like. It is a multi-layered initiative. And uh, we publish this uh, data every year. And this is the 2020 data, which was uh, brought out uh, two, three months back. What we see is that India has a very large burden of gram-negative infections. Since this data is coming from tertiary care hospitals, so I would uh, imagine this has kind, uh, some kind of a bias to the data because most of the data is coming from the ICUs of the tertiary care hospitals. Nevertheless, uh, ESBL rates are very high, almost 70% ESBLs in E. coli and Klebsiella pneumoniae. Carbapenem, which is one of the uh, 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 drug of uh, uh, choice for very highly resistant infections, we see 30% resistance in E. coli, Klebsiella pneumonia, almost 50%, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, 25%. But it is the Acinetobacter bomini, which is a very common pathogen which is seen in hospital acquired infections. There is almost 70% resistance to carbapenem. We are seeing 
<coughs> increasing resistance to cholestin. Then salmonella typhi. We are seeing almost 100% sensitivity to ampicillin, chloramphenicol, and cotramaxazole. Now, this is a very encouraging example. The reason is that these drugs are not used that commonly for last many years. And um, this, this particular pathogen, which had become resistant to these three drugs in 19 and 90s, is now fully sensitive to uh, all the three drugs, thereby uh, providing an evidence of the fact that when we stopped using uh, these antibiotics, the uh, organism again became susceptible to this particular drugs. So if we reduce our use and reduce the antimicrobial pressure, we do have a hope that you know the drugs will start working again. Uh, among gram positives, we see almost 40% MRSA from this network, and we are seeing increasing uh, 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 resistance to tigicycline, linozolid, uh, especially in Enterococcus uh, uh, bugs, which is Enterococcus fecium and fecalis. And we are also seeing 30 to 40% resistance to caspofungin uh, and fluconazole in uh, uh, fungal uh, infections caused by Candida glabrata and Candida Oris. Now, this is a very glaring example how things quickly things change uh, when you in, start um, uh, misusing a drug. Now, there is a drug called ferropenem, which is a oral drug, but it has cross reactivity to carbapenems. So once those drugs are introduced in the country, the uh, level of carbapenem resistance increased from 3% to 40% just in a matter of six years. So this is how uh, when you increase the use of certain drug, uh, it actually uh, is very detrimental to uh, the levels of drug resistance in the community as a whole. Uh, this is referring to one of the speaker's question who said, I did not have amoxicillin. How did I develop this resistance? So uh, if we look at these four bugs, which we most commonly see in um, uh, in different uh, hospital settings, we see that there are different mechanisms of resistance that they possess. And it is very difficult to decide how to treat these, uh, uh, these pathogens, which have multiple mechanisms of resistance, which we are able to figure out because we carry out the genotypic characterization. Now, this is uh, from the COVID patients. We saw a lot of uh, Klebsiella pneumonia, Acinetobacter, and E. coli infections in COVID patients who were hospitalized for a long time. Uh, similar kind of drug resistance uh, genes, the NDMs, which is predominantly seen in India, which is followed by uh, OXA48s. And these are the different drug mechanisms, uh, drug resistance mechanisms. Almost 35% of the patients had polymicrobial infection, uh, means more than one uh, bug was causing infection, and 8% had both fungal and the bacterial infections. A lot of broad spectrum antimicrobials were used in the COVID patients which, who were hospitalized. So um, it is actually a bigger uh, uh, epidemic which will unfold uh, in India next year onwards because it takes at least some time for. Uh, the effects to be visible. So uh, that's why I think this week, uh, 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 Antibiotic Awareness Week, we should uh, try to create as much awareness about restricting the misuse of antimicrobials as we can. Now, uh, everyone has alluded to the integrated surveillance, the One Health surveillance. We recently published the challenges that uh, uh, a country like India faces in implementing uh, antimicrobial resistance. We have uh, initiated uh, countrywide whole genome, genome sequencing based surveillance of carbapenem and cholestin resistant E. coli and Klebsiella pneumoniae in two sites in India, and we will see how we uh, go forward. But there have been some encouraging developments at the regulatory uh, side. Uh, we have been able to ban the use of cholestin as a growth promoter uh, in the country. Uh, cholestin again is used to uh, treat uh, the uh, uh, carbapenem resistant infections. So uh, we ca can't afford to misuse this drug and lose this drug too. So the government has banned its use as growth promoter in the livestock and the animal sector. Uh, we have also now uh, set limits for antibiotics and antibiotic residues, uh, which are used in the chicken or in the seafood. Uh, we are also monitoring the antibiotic residues in the milk and the poultry. We have been able to ban some of the 
inappropriate combinations of antimicrobials which were available in the market. So the regulatory space has been uh, fairly encouraging and sensitive on uh, this regard. Uh, now, what are the lessons that we have learned uh, so far? There is a sampling bias in the way data is presented. Uh, the tertiary care data is over presented and the reason for that is that most of the labs are only located in the tertiary care and the district hospitals and the lower hospitals do not have any labs. That's why there is a dearth of data. There are not enough blood cultures which are collected because blood cultures are expensive. Clinicians are not encouraged to uh, collect blood uh, cultures. Uh, also, there is a clinician deficit on the test results because of the quality of the lab, the quality of the results sometimes, uh, which stems from the lack of standardized protocols. <clears throat> the most important uh, reason why we do not have uh, disease burden data from India is the lack of uh, hospital management uh, and information systems. And uh, that's why we are not able to link uh, uh, the patient outcomes to the drug resistant infections. This we are trying to address in ICMR now and maybe in a year or a couple of years, we will have this data as well. We were able to bring that out for the COVID patients where we saw more than uh, 60 to 70 percent mortality in patients who acquired uh, uh, drug resistant pathogens during their stay in hospitals. EMR surveillance is very hard to sell to clinicians and policymakers which, because it requires a lot of investment, not just in terms of financial investments, in terms of capacity building at all levels of healthcare so that you are able to uniformly capture that data. But then there are some uh, tools and enablers which have become available recently or will become available during the course of time, which makes uh, us optimistic that we will be able to uh, uh, sustain this momentum on uh, expanding this uh, AMR surveillance across the country. There are now standardized uh, procedures, the quality assurance system in place. Uh, improved diagnostics, especially POC diagnostics, can give a big push to this particular initiative because so far we only uh, have to depend on microbiology labs and the availability of labs is limited, but then Government of India has taken few decisions, um, which if uh, they go well, they, we will have laboratories even the district, at the district hospitals. Then we can also look at uh, the research labs uh, who are generating uh, some data for the purpose of surveillance and uh, definitely designated funding and um, strength and engagement with the policymakers and hospital administrators will go a long way in um, supporting uh, countrywide uh, surveillance. Now, this is the initiative that I was talking about where uh, Government of India has uh, launched an initiative that every district hospital will have an ID block. So uh, th this is a very encouraging development and we have already recommended from National Essential Diagnostic List that every district hospital should have the culture facility, whether it is automated or uh, the manual facility. So um, all these developments, I think they augur very well with the overall um, aim of strengthening surveillance so that we know what is happening at the level of the community. We know what is happening uh, uh, at the PHC level also. So uh, that's why it is very, very important that we uh, strengthen all the uh, levels of health care for, for this purpose. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Walia. And you've shared some very encouraging news about how we can, say, make a microbe be resistant by stopping use of that particular uh, drug. Uh, so that is one thing which, is, which has come out very well, which struck me, at least in your presentation, very strongly. 